Hallelujah. Yes, Father God, just as your servant exhorted earlier, we want to see you and we want to listen from you. Can I invite each and everyone to stand up to welcome the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, let us open them in Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. The word of the Lord says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death nor mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Hallelujah, most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father. Indeed, we want to have a glimpse of your glory this morning. Indeed, we want to listen and hear directly from you, Father God. Most gracious Lord, thank you for gathering us this morning. May we glorify you, may we honor you in our midst, O God. And Lord, if there are any thoughts, if there are any hearts, if there are any motives, if there are any lives, Father God, that are yet to be in line with you, Lord, corporately as a church and family, we allow you, Lord, to cleanse us, to forgive us, to wash us, and help us be aligned with you. Lord, we entrust your words unto you. Father God, quicken it. May it serve alive to all the hearers, to all the people gathering here, as well as people joining us online. Lord, continue to hide your servant behind your shadow, that it is only you and you alone that will be lifted up and glorified, O God. Thank you so much, Lord. Empower your words as we continue to rebuke whatever works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will try to hinder our gathering this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Sige po, magsiupo po tayo. Hallelujah. Palakpakan po natin ng Panginoon sa buhay ng mga kapatid na ginamit ng Panginoon ngayong umagang ito. And we thank the Lord as well for the life of each and every one who are gathering in this place today. Amen. The coming of one is a ministry, my dear brothers and sisters. The coming of one in fulfillment of the word of the Lord in Hebrews 10.25, that let us not forget and gathering together. Amen. So, because when we gather together, my dear brothers and sisters, we exalt the name of Jesus. Amen. Yun po yung sinabi ng kanta. Amen. So, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, again, I want to borrow the exhortation of our brother William earlier with the desire that, Lord, we want to see you. Amen. Do we all share that desire? That, Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to listen from you. Amen. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you, I invite you all to exhort and encourage ourselves that let us allow the Lord to be revealed through His Word to us this morning. 
that through the lens of the Word of God, ay makita natin ang Panginoon. Through the, the lens, through the lens of the Word of God, that we can see the Lord, that we can experience the Lord this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Praise you, Jesus. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue our message on God's purposes. Last week, we learned that reasons that God created us, reason that we exist, is that to grieve or to bring pleasure to God. Amen? To bring pleasure to the Lord. Or synonymous to, to glorify the name of the Lord. Amen po? And in how, in which manner, in which way that we can give or bring pleasure to the Lord, it says in there, by obedience to His Word. By faithfully abiding in His Word. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, let's learn this week, let's learn another avenue, another purpose of our creation. Another purpose of God creating us. And the title of our message today is, God created us to be His dwelling. Amen? God created us to be His dwelling. Just as the book of Revelation that we have uh, read earlier, that at the end of the age, a new heaven and a new Jerusalem will come down. Amen. A new earth will come down and God will dwell with His people forever. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. But if we look back from the Old Testament, from the history of our creation, that has always been the purpose and the plan of God to dwell among His people. Amen, church? So if we open our Bible and Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, my dear brothers and sisters, just quickly remind us, this outline the fall of man. This outline when Satan in the form of that serpent deceived Adam and Eve in coveting of that tree of life. And so they sinned. And my dear brothers and sisters, what did the Lord said or the woman said? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die, the Lord said. Amen. And my dear brothers and sisters, to make it short, they fell on the temptation. Amen? So when they fell on the temptation, the Bible says that their eyes were open. They now know what is right and wrong. They now have that consciousness. My dear brothers and sisters, and if we jump on uh, verse 8, it says in here, Then the man, oh let's, ano, um, sige, let's start from verse 6. It says in here, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. So my dear brothers and sisters, they have always been naked. But because they are pure, but because only the consciousness of God is in them, they did not mind that. Amen. They did not mind that. 
The only reason now, my dear brothers and sisters, that men's eyes or even equally women's eyes, if they see a little bit of a flesh, lumalaki, and sin entered because of that corrupted nature. But before the world was corrupted, Adam and Eve did not mind that they were naked because in their mind, they did not have the corrupted mind, my dear brothers and sisters. But the moment that they ate the, that, that fruit, it says in there, it opened their eyes. Sin came to them and they realized that they are naked. And naturally, my dear brothers and sisters, take note, naturally, no one told them dressmaking. Wala namang nagturo sa kanila kung papaano guma, gumawa ng damit. Wala namang nagturo sa kanila kung papaano gumawa ng covering. But automatically, amen, because of that sinful nature, automatically there is the tendency to cover. So what they have done, my dear brothers and sisters, is they gather leaves. They sow them. I don't know how did they do it. They sow leaves and put as a covering on their body. But take note, it says in here, verse 8, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, here, for me, it says that it says in here that they heard the Lord walking in the garden at the cool of the day. So meaning probably that might be a morning. But my dear brothers and sisters, in my understanding, it says in here that the Lord God walked in the garden regularly to marvel, to view His creation. Remember last time? When we said that when God saw all His creation, what did God said? It was very good and it gave pleasure to the Lord. And nothing can give pleasure to the Lord day by day when Adam and Eve wake up to go and check on them. Kumustahin niya sila. And the Lord says in there that the Lord walked in the garden, in the cool of the day, where does Adam and Eve live, my dear brothers and sisters? Anyone? In the garden. That means to say, my dear brothers and sisters, that our four parents, four ah, yung ating ninuno, hindi apat, baka sabihin ninyo, bakit naging apat? No, Our four parents, ang mga ninuno natin, si Adam and Eve, this passage tells us that they walk with God in the garden. Amen. They had that face-to-face -face fellowship with God. Do you agree with me? Do we agree that they have that face-to-face, -face, they have that close relationship with God, that they walk with God in the garden regularly? But it so happened that when they sinned, their eyes were open, and it should be a, a usual, regular morning where God is walking and they will see God and they will walk with God. But what happened? God cannot find them. Amen? God cannot find them because what happened? They hid. Sabi niya rito. Amen? So just imagine this, my dear brothers and sisters. Is it not awesome? Is it not amazing that Adam and Eve and God were harmoniously walking in the Garden of Eden, were harmoniously talking with each other, were harmoniously in fellowship, were harmoniously in a relationship, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? What does it mean? What is the picture that it shows us? It shows us intimacy. It shows us relationship. It shows us fellowship. It shows up, it shows us that love. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen po. It shows us communion. Amen. It means that God loves our four parents as He has always been. Amen po. And kung gaano yung pagmamahal niya sa mga magulang, ganun din yung pagmamahal niya sa mga anak. 
Amen. Isn't it, Trevor, is it true that they said that parents, when they have their grandchildren, they love their grandchildren more than their actual children? <laughs> I know, Abby's here. Close your, <laughs> close your ears, but is that true? Amen. That's what they say. And that's the Bible says, my dear brothers and sisters, we will find out later that God, as much as He loved our four parents, Adam and Eve, He loved the children and the children and the children's children of Adam and Eve greater. That is you and me. Tayo po yan, mga kapatid. Amen. And why did God treat them with such Again, because God created us to be His dwelling. God created us so that He may dwell with us, that He may walk with Adam and Eve regularly in the garden. Amen, church? But what did the word of the Lord said? Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. What happened? They now have that consciousness that they are naked. So what did they do, my dear brothers and sisters? It says in here, they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Nagtago po sila, mga kapatid. Amen. They hid themselves instead of rushing to seek God for His forgiveness. Lumalayo sila. Sounds familiar. Parang tayo lang po yun. Brother Ramon, parang tayo lang po yun, mga kapatid. It's good, Brother Ramon has the guts to come and stand and testify. How many of us in here, my dear brothers and sisters, that did not have the guts to come and stand and testify? I can empathize with Brother Ramon and I know that everyone can empathize too. How many times, my dear brothers and sisters, my brother Ramon, are you listening? How many times, my dear brothers and sisters, that for me personally, the place where I feel most satisfied and the place where I feel most fulfilled and the place where I feel most happy at times becomes the loneliest place. At times becomes the place that I don't even want to step my foot into. And just as Adam and Eve, that when they feel distant from the Lord, they choose to hide and run away. You know, when the Lord God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh, and Jonah opted to go to Tarshish, and in Jonah's mind, Lord, it's the same ministry. Lord, it is the same calling, it is the same purpose. I'm gonna go to Tarshish and proclaim the word of the Lord, but the Lord says, this is the place where I put you into and you're stepping away from this place. You are not stepping away from this place. You are stepping from my plans to you. You are stepping away from me. Amen. So let us be encouraged of the life of King David. You know, King David, how many times that he sinned against the Lord? King David, how many times that he fell down? King David, how many times that he, uh, he, he fell away from the Lord? How many times, my dear brothers and sisters, that he is discouraged? But the moment that he realized, that the moment that he recognized that hindi siya nag he come running back to the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, me and Ate, Annie, Ate Alice, sorry. <laughs> me and Ate Alice were talking, we came to church together this morning and we were talking about the history of the church. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is the place, this is the dwelling place that the Lord set forth for us to gather and to meet Him. Amen. And if you are not stepping in, if you are not coming in, my dear brothers and sisters, you are not running away from the play, from the church. You are not running away from the place. You are running away from the fellowship of the Lord. Amen. The Lord said that I have set places for you to be in. 
in a set particular time. And if you are not found in that place, that means that you are not standing in the place or in the dwelling that the Lord has set us in. So let's continue to encourage each other. Let's continue to encourage one another. And yes, it's true sometime, another Christian can be a help, an aunt can be a help, other people can be, an, uh, uh, can be a help. Otherwise, let's lay the word of the Lord. Help us. Amen, church. Otherwise, let us let the, the word of the Lord help us. So, let's be encouraged and reminded, mga kapatid. Amen? So, let's continue. When they hide themselves in verse 9, it says in there, But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Amen. The Lord God called to the man. The Lord God called to Adam and said that, Adam, where are you? My dear brothers and sisters, Adam and Eve went into hiding. Just like you and me, we step away. But my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here, the Lord come seeking for them. Amen. The Lord come seeking for them. The Lord sought them. Amen. It is another proof, my dear brothers and sisters, that God wants that relationship. God wants that fellowship. Amen. Diba? Sa bawat relasyon may nanunuyo. And as you can see, that God just did that for them. They were the ones who sinned. They were the ones who stepped away from that relationship. But it was God who came and sought for them. It was God who came and seek them. Amen. How many times, my dear brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord says, If you come near me, I will come near you. There is hundred paces between you and me. The Lord says, Do that one step, and I will cover the rest of the 99 paces. Amen. All we need to do, my dear brothers and sisters, is to open our eyes, to be receptive. Though Adam and Eve sinned, but their ears are open. Their desires were open. Because if their ears were not open, the Lord would have been calling, and they are not listening, and their hearts are hardened. But my dear brothers and sisters, the only way that they were restored, the only way that they were spared, but because their ears were open. And they heard the Lord calling them. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is a scientific evidence that says that when a person is dying, the last senses that is preserved is the sense of hearing. So people, if someone is dying, continue to preach the word of the Lord to them. Continue to preach the word of the Lord to them because we don't know the grace and mercy of the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. We don't know the grace and mercy of the Lord. Ganun din po tayo. However deep of a sinner we become, just continue to open the channel of hearing because you never know one day that might save you. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So dito makikita natin mga kapatid that it was the Lord who came and looked for them. It was the Lord who came and sought for them. Amen po. And kung itutuloy po natin mga kapatid, sa verse 10, this is the time my dear brothers and sisters that the Lord as a penance to their sin, sinabi niya sa babae, maghihirap ka, childbirth, man, you need to sweat the brow of your forehead in order to eat and he cursed the Serpent, the sabi niya, serpent, from now on you will crawl on your belly and due time it will come. That sabi niya doon that the seed of the woman will crush your head although you are going to bite his heel. Pero mga kapatid, I want us to jump in verse 21. I want us to jump in verse 21 that says, Because of their nakedness, they sow some leaves to serve as their covering, but it will not suffice. In verse 21, it says in here, The Lord God 
made a garment of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Amen. The Lord says, it's not good enough, it's not acceptable enough to have that leaves to cover you, to cover your nakedness. I am going to give you a better covering. And what did the Lord God said? The Lord God made a skin of a uh, skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Sabi niya rito mga kapatid, God made garment of skin for Adam and Eve to clothe them. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, before God can make a cloth of animal skin, what first will He do? Anyone? Kill. He needs to kill an animal in order to get the skin of that animal to cloth and cover them, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? But my dear brothers and sisters, God did not just simply kill an animal to provide a cloth or a covering for their physical nakedness. But my dear brothers and sisters, God has made a way for their sins to be forgiven. God has made a way for their, not only for their physical nakedness to be covered, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. God made a way for their sins to be atoned for. God will make a way for their life to be spared. Kasi ano po yung sabi niya sa Romans 3.23? The wages of sin is death. Amen. Yun naman yung warning ng Panginoon sa kanila. The moment that you eat the, tree, the fruit of this tree, you will die. Mga kapatid, were you ever wonder na, Lord, sabi mo, the moment that they eat the fruit of their tree, they will die. Pero bakit hindi sila namatay? Nagsisinungaling ka ba, Panginoon? Are you not true to your words? No, my dear brothers and sisters, the, word, the Lord was true to His words. Because that is His word. The moment, my dear brothers and sisters, that they sinned, they are bound, they are due to die. But the Lord provided a covering for their sin so that He cannot see the sin. The Lord provided an atonement sacrifice for their sin. Dahil sabi niya sa Romans 3.23, Everyone who sinned, the penance of that sin is death. Sabi niya rito mga kapatid, Amen po. Hallelujah. Sabi niya rito, sinabi ni Adam dito sa serpent sa verse 3, no? the moment that you touch it, you will die. So the Lord is not lying, mga kapatid. Amen. The Lord is not lying. Hebrews 9.22, it says in here, The law requires that everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Kung wala daw dugo, my dear brothers and sisters, na huhugas sa ating kasalanan, kung wala daw dugo, my dear brothers and sisters, that will cover our sin, we will not be forgiven. Amen? Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says in here, For the life of the animal is in the blood. Therefore, I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Amen. That explains, my dear brothers and sisters, the principle of atonement. That explains the principle of substitutionary atonement. In Tagalog, pamalit ulo. In Tagalog, pangbayad kasalanan. In Tagalog, my dear brothers and sisters, panghugas sa ating kasalanan. Amen. Because we are all sinner, the wages of our sin is death. But the Lord God provided a way for us to be spared of that death. 
And here comes the atonement. Pamalit, mga kapatid, sa ating buhay. Last week, all Jerusalem, all the nation of Israel celebrated the Feast of Atonement. This is the one day of the year where the high priest will go to the temple to offer for that blood of the animal, to atone for the sins of the people, pamalit, ulo, panghugas sa kasalanan ng mga tao. And my dear brothers and sisters, in the Old Testament, this happens to be animal sacrifices. In the Old Testament, this happens to be animal sacrifices. But in the New Testament, this happens to be the blood of our Lord Jesus. Amen? Matthew 5.17, it says in here, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Amen? Before Jesus came, there is only way for us to be forgiven. There is only way for us for our sin to be washed away. There is only way for us to be saved. And that is through the way of the life of the blood of the animal. Amen. That is the law. And Jesus said, I did not come to abolish it. I come it to perfect it. So, ibig sabihin that substitutionary atonement is still exists, but rather than that the blood of the animal, it's now going to be my blood given as a sacrifice once and for all. Amen, church? Are we following this? Amen? And 1 John verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, it says in here, Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Whether you live in the time of antiquity or you are going to live in the future, there is only one blood whereby your sins will be atoned for. And that is no other than the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of the Calvary 2,000 years ago. Amen. All we need to do is to apply that in us. All we need to do is apply that blood as a covering to us. By how? By virtue of accepting Him as our personal Lord and Savior. By virtue of putting our faith in His name. Amen po. John 1.29 John the Baptist said, Jesus is the Lamb of God who was sacrificed, who was our atoning sacrifice, taking away the sins of the world. Amen po. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. Hindi nga po ba napakadakila ng Panginoon, mga kapatid? Amen. Thank you, Lord, because napakadakila mo and Father, we can never repay you back. Ano man po ang aming gagawin, we cannot never repay you back. Amen, church? So my dear brothers and sisters, just talking about the principle of substitutionary atonement, God in the Garden of Eden did not just simply kill an animal to provide a cloth for them. God made an atoning sacrifice in order for their sin to be covered in order for their life to be spared, in order that they may be forgiveness of their sins. Amen, church? Amen? So now, I am going to provoke your thoughts. No? I'm going to provoke your thoughts. I'm going to challenge our biblical interpretation. Or sa study of the Bible, we call it hermeneutics. That is the uh, process of... Um, uh, that is the process of interpreting the Bible. So my dear brothers and sisters, sa passage na ating binasa, para ma-encourage po tayong magbasa, matuto, at ma-inspire ma, ma po tayo na basahin ang ating mga Biblia, mga kapatid. Hindi po ito trick question. Who is the first one 
in the Bible to make an offering? Or who is the first one in the Bible to make uh, a blood or as an animal offering in the Bible? Anyone? It's not a trick question. Just to check that we are all listening. Anyone po? Sino? Sino po ang unang-una? God. But let's not forget, there is the God, the Holy Spirit, there is the God, the Son, there is the God, the Father. Who is it in particular? Anyone? Anyone? Hindi na kayo sigurado. Anyone? God the Father. Amen. Up until last night, yun din yung akala ko. But while reading and dwelling and uh, getting deeper in His Word, actually, I, I would have, ano, um, I, I mean, uh, before we proceed, I want to take this opportunity na in behalf of this church, Christ is our Rock Church Ministries International. Gusto ko lamang pong batiin ang partner natin sa, sa gawain ng Panginoon sa Kingdom of God, uh, Josiah Orbistondo sa pangunguna ni uh, Pastor Jake Castro, brother po ni Sister Marian. They were celebrating their 11th year anniversary ngayong araw na to. And their service, my dear brothers and sister, usually is 10 o'clock in the morning. So it was 3 o'clock here in the morning. And uh, I, uh, because I know that it will be their anniversary, while I was reading the, the word of the Lord, nung I feel na I'm satisfied na natapos ko na, um, hinihintay ko yung 3 o'clock to be able to tune in with them. Inihintay ko po yung 3 o'clock to be able to tune in with them. Pero 3 o'clock na, hindi pa sila nag-uumpisa. So I still continue to, to meditate on the Word of God. I still continue to read the Word of God. And ito nga yung ibinigay ng Panginoon na fresh revelation. And yun pala, little that we know, yung uh, parang pinaka-bishop po nila who were coming from Israel, pumunta po sila sa Israel, uh, their flight was delayed. So they need to move pala yung anniversary at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, meaning I think 10 o'clock in here. So uh, hindi na kwan. Pero the Lord has a purpose kasi akala ko kaninang 3 o'clock. And while I dig sa, sa libro, sa salita ng Panginoon, and this is what I learned. And like I said, katulad ninyo, up until that morning, I thought that it was the Lord or it was the Father who first made the substitutionary offering. It was the Father who first made the atonement offering. Pero my dear brothers and sisters, sabi niya rito, Genesis 1.26, Let us make man according to our image and our likeness, sabi ng Panginoon. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, let us make man. Alam na natin ito na hindi ang kausap ng Panginoon ay angel. Sino po ang kakonfer ng Panginoon dito? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen po. Malinaw. And kung babasahin natin, even sa Genesis chapter 3, verse uh, 22, sabi niya rito, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us. Again, it's plural. There is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen po. And kung titignan po natin sa Leviticus chapter 4, mga kapatid, ituturo niya sa atin dito that in the principle of atoning for the sins, in the principle na mag-aaton tayo ng kasalanan, mga kapatid, kanino tayo mag-aalay? Kanino tayo nagkasala? God the Father. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It is the God the Father na mag-aalay tayo. It is to God the Father that we need to appease His wrath, mga kapatid. And with the same passage, chapter 4 ng Leviticus, in the principle of substitutionary atonement, sino po ang kailangang mag-alay? It is the high priest. Amen. It is the high priest ang may kakayahan lamang na mag-alay sa ating Panginoon. And the fresh revelation is this. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14, it says in here that we have a great high priest who ascended into heaven, who is Jesus, the Son of God, whom let us firmly hold our faith into. 
Sabi niya rito, Amen. So mga kapatid, Jesus, the Son of God, is our great high priest. Amen? John 3.36, it says in here, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains in Him. Amen? The moment that we sin, the wrath of God is in us. So kung hindi natin tinanggap ang kanyang anak na si Hesus Kristo, that wrath remains in us, mga kapatid. Amen. So malinaw mga kapatid dito na who has the wrath na kailangang iapis, it is God the Father. Who needs to offer, it is the high priest who is no other than the Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Hindi naman pwedeng Si God the Father ay mag-offer sa kanyang sarili. It will not be called an offering. It will not be called an offering. Kung sakaling ikaw, padalhan mo ng sarili ang iyong, uh, ng sarili ng rosas, it's never be called na, ano, na gift. Siguro gift to yourself, but do, do, nakikita po ba natin mga kapatid? Hindi po pwedeng si God the Father ang mag-offer sa kanyang sarili para iapis niya ang kanyang sarili. So therefore, mga kapatid, sino ang kailangang mag-offer? Sino po ang nag-offer? Who was the first one to offer an animal sacrifice in the Bible? It is no other than our great high priest of which no other than our Lord God the Son. Amen. Amen po. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. If you are not convinced, mga kapatid, kung hindi pa tayo kumbinsido, John 6.46, it says in here, No one has seen the Father. Paborit ni best friend na i-quote ito. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only He has seen the Father. Amen. Sabi niya rito, Lord, In Genesis, you said that you walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. In Genesis, you said that you dwell with Adam and Eve in the garden. And yet, sabi mo rito that no one has ever seen God, but only the Son who is Himself God and in His closest relationship with the Father has made known to Him. Exodus 33 verse 20, The Lord God said to Moses, You cannot see my face, for no one can see my face and live. Amen po, mga kapatid. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, I know and I do believe that it was God the Son. Di ba? John chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God Sabi niya rito and ano yung sabi niya doon The word became flesh and dwelt among us in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. He was conferring with the triune head God, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, and God the Father. Kaya pala yung sabi niya sa passage that, sabi niya ron that, no one have seen, no one have perceived, no human mind can comprehend No human eyes can imagine you. No human ears can perceive the glory and wonder of God the Father. Because mga kapatid, kaya nga sabi niya rito, di ba yung sabi ng mga disipulo, show us the Father. Ano yung sabi ni Kristo? You can see and you can know the Father through me. Amen. Napakabuti po talaga ng Panginoon. Amen po. So my dear brothers and sisters, we can never repay Jesus Christ. 
Kasi he did not only give himself as a willing sacrifice, but he was the one who first made a sacrifice in order for our parents, Adam and Eve, will be spared from that automatic death. Amen. So mga kapatid, as we continue, because of their sins, they are not fitted to dwell in the Garden of Eden anymore. Diba? They are not fitted to, to live in the Garden of Eden. So God banished them away from the Garden of Eden. And nakita natin mga kapatid that Adam and Eve, diba? kumbaga this is the whole world. And there is a spot in there called the Garden of Eden. That although they were taken away from the Garden of Eden, they have the whole world to populate. So they went out of the Garden of Eden. They had children. They had children's children. Their children's children. And mga kapatid, they have filled the whole earth. Up until the time of Noah. Up until the time of the flood. That the Lord sought his people again but the people does not listen to the Lord so the Lord destroyed this earth he preserved the life of Noah up until the time mga kapatid during the tower of Babel that they rebelled against the Lord again and the Lord scattered them and one day God sought his people again in the life of Abraham he called Abraham from the land of the Chaldees and he said that, Abraham, go into a place where I will show you because I have chosen you to be the father of many descendants. And nakita natin that through Abraham, he chose his son Isaac and he chose his grandson Jacob who later on became Israel. That when they rebuilt against God, God sent them, my dear brothers and sisters, in uh, oppression na maging subject to be uh, maging alila sa Egypt for 400 years. That when they cry to the Lord again, the Lord heard their cry and served a pro uh, sent a prophet in the name of Moses who brought them out mga kapatid of Egypt into the wilderness. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, after leaving Egypt on their way to the promised land, God said something most interesting to the people. Exodus chapter 25 verse 8, it says in here, Have the people make me a sanctuary and I will dwell among them. Amen. Again, the Lord, just like during the time of Adam and Eve that he wants to dwell with his people. When the people of Israel were coming out of Egypt again, the Lord God said, tell the people to make me a sanctuary. That sanctuary in Hebrew word is translated as the tabernacle. Amen. Have the people to make me a tabernacle. The Hebrew word dwell is translated with the same word tabernacle. So have the people make me a tabernacle that I may tabernacle with them. Sabi niya rito. So mga kapatid, the people of Israel made this sanctuary called the tabernacle. And this tabernacle, my dear brothers and sisters, comes with a specific dimension, 120, uh, 150 feet by 75 feet, it has a lot, mga kapatid, of equipment in there. But the most important thing is the holy place. That inside that holy place, that is where the holy of holiest is. And ano po yung symbolize, ano po yung significance ng holy of holiest, mga kapatid? It hosts the presence of God. That is where the presence of God is. And why did God ask the people to dwell, to make a tabernacle for Him, mga kapatid? Because He wants a holy place to tabernacle with. And He wants to tabernacle among His people. 
So mga kapatid, as we end, we will continue the next part next week. As we end, mga kapatid, if you do not know yet, today is the Feast of Tabernacle. Amen. Today is the Feast of Tabernacle where all nation of Israel is remembering this tabernacle. The Lord told the people of Israel in Leviticus to so celebrate and observe the Feast of Tabernacle. Jesus Christ, when He was walking in this earth, He observed the Feast of Tabernacle, my dear brothers and sisters. This is one of the three major feasts sa Hebrew, amen, sa Hebrew nation, and that is the Feast of Tabernacle. And as the Feast of Tabernacle, I just want to remind us all today, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the reason and the purpose of our creation is in order for God to tabernacle with us. In order for God to dwell among His people. He created Adam and Eve and as the message clearly desired to tabernacle with them. But when they sinned and failed, God sought them. When all humanity failed, God sought humanity by preserving Noah. When all humanity sinned again, God sought people by the life of Abraham. And through the life of His chosen Son, Israel. And when the people of Israel wander off, God sought them again. And my dear brothers and sisters, God is seeking His people up until this time. God sent His Son Jesus Christ to tabernacle with them in human form in human flesh. But when Jesus Christ returned to heaven, God sent Himself in the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell with us and to tabernacle with us. But it is no longer a tabernacle made out of tent. It is no longer a tabernacle made out of the temple. Glory to God in the highest. You now become the dwelling of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Galatians 2.20 It is no longer I that live, but the Holy Spirit of God tabernacles with me, dwells with me. So my dear brothers and sisters, the encouragement to this pulpit is, Revelation 3.20, God is still seeking people. Just as He sought people before, Revelation 3.20 says that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whether that be the door to your heart, whether that be the door to your life, whether that be the door to your faith, God has been knocking on those doors, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord is encouraging us to hear His voice. Sabi niya rito, I stand at the door and knock. Ano yung number first step? Anyone hears my voice. We need to open that spiritual senses of hearing so that we can hear the voice of the Lord. Amen, church. That was our desire at the beginning of the service. Lord, we want to listen to you. I am just a mouthpiece. I am not, these are not my words. If we truly desire to listen to the Lord, set away our prejudices. This is not me. This is not my word. Let us open our spiritual senses to hear the word of the Lord because that is the only way that we can fully open our hearts. Amen? Even how many times that you say, Lord, I open my heart if you never heard the message. I tell you, that heart might not truly be open. 
We need first to open our spiritual senses to hear the true message of the Lord that will enable us to open our heart. That is the only way that the Lord can come in and dwell with us. That is the only way that we can claim Galatians 2.20 that the Holy Spirit lives in us. Amen, church. Will you respond? Will you open to the door of your hearts? Will you open to the door of your lives? Will you open the door of your faith? Faith cometh by hearing in hearing the word of God. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not harden our hearts. Let us not our harden our hearts. Shall we come to the Lord? Will we come to the Lord and say, Come Lord! Come Lord! That's the meaning of the word that we've been quoting, Maranatha! Maranatha! Our Lord God, come! I open my heart. Maranatha, come Lord and dwell in me. My dear brothers and sisters, Papaano po tayo magre-response? John 14.23 says, Jesus says is, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And he will come to him and make our dwelling in him. Amen. Church, the Lord wants to make you his dwelling today. The Lord wants to make you his tabernacle today. And we know that by human nature, there is the desire connected to the Lord. How many times that we claim the word love? I love the Lord. The Lord loved me. But the Lord says, I love you. But if you remain in sin, my wrath remains in you. Can a loving God love us? while being vengeful of us. That's possible. Because while we do not reciprocate to the Lord, that wrath because of that sin remains in us. Where does the love of the Lord comes from? The love of the Lord comes from that even though we are enmity against the Father, even though we are distant from the Father, even though the wrath of the Father is in us, but He provided His love, His Son, Jesus Christ. Take Him now, my dear brothers and sisters. Accept Him now, my dear brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord says, If you love me, Jesus said, Keep my word. Obey my word. Faithfully obey my word. Amen, church. Let's stand up and let us welcome the Lord and let us declare that Lord Maranatha, O Lord our God, come. Because Father, if you will not come to us, our whole life here on this earth is meaningless. Amen. Let's welcome po the music team. Let's welcome music team. Let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mga kapatid, let us not miss this moment. Let us seek the Lord. Let us ask the Lord and say that, Lord, dwell in me. Tabernacle in me. Though how many times na iniiwasan kita, though how many times, Father God, that I just wanna feel close to you, though how many times that I just wanna be acquainted with you, just how many times, Father, that I am satisfied knowing that you are there. Lord, today, I don't want to miss this moment in opportunity that, Lord, I don't just want to become your neighbor. I don't just want to be living next to you. Father, I want you to come and live in me. I want you to dwell and tabernacle in my life. Let's call upon his name.
Church, recognize that there is only one name that is above every name, and that name is Jesus.
if you feel extinguished, if you feel that you cannot carry on another step or two, if you feel that you have a lot of questions, if you cannot understand things, seek the name of Jesus. For there is no name that is above every name where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. There is only one Lord that we proclaim here and that is Jesus. Come on, people of God, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Praise you, Jesus.
speak Jesus let's seal that off my dear brothers and sisters
Church, let's seek the presence of God. Stay, Lord, for your need. My children, my son, my daughter, my people, I have chosen to dwell with you. Though how many times you turn your back from me, that is my nature. I keep on seeking for you. Just as I have sought you in the past. Just as I have sought your four parents in the past. People of God, we don't want to miss this moment. Open up to the Lord. Tell the Lord, Direct from your mouth, direct from your heart. What do you want the Lord to hear today? What do you need from the Lord today? Tell the Lord, Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want the salvation of my family. Lord, I want increased commitment. Lord, I want you to steer that gift. Lord, I want that submission and humble obedience to you. Father, I desire to be called your son. I desire to be your dwelling. Father, I desire that do not delay your coming. We have been faithfully waiting and waiting and waiting. Come, O oh Lord, our God. Maranatha, do not delay. The Bible says, if the people will pray in unison, that come, Lord, Maranatha, come, O Lord our God, the Lord will come. There is no point delaying the word of the Lord. It is better to spend a moment in the presence of the Lord than thousand in this earth. Praise you, Jesus. We have a God who loves us at the same time is vengeful to us. My dear brothers and sisters, come and be right with the Lord. Thank you so much, Father people online if you want to experience an encounter what we have been experiencing in encountering here this morning just be in one with the Lord where two or three are gathered in His name there He is in the midst of us all Father thank you for your mercy and grace thank you that you continue to seek us, Lord. Thank you that you continue to manifest your faithfulness, your love, your grace, and mercy upon the life of each and every one. Lord, it is our desire and prayer that may we truly reflect our love back to you, Father God, in obedience, holding on to your words. Help us celebrate your words. 
Help us to have an open, spiritual sense of hearing, Lord, that we may hear from you. Father, thank you for the victory. Thank you for the life of my dear brothers and sisters that you have used here today. Thank you for the life of my dear brothers and sisters that you have gathered here today. For the life of my dear brothers and sisters that you have gathered online. Father, in one spirit and in one unity, we lift up and proclaim your name on high. Lord God, consider and accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving today. May it serve to you as a sweet aroma to your name. And Father God, thank you for the continued protection and covering that you will bestow upon your people. Just as we will exit this worship hall today up until you will bring us forth next week. And whatever activity, wherever places that will go in between the time, thank you that your safety and security, your protection precedes us, Father. For our brothers and sisters who are far from here, who are in other counties, who are in other countries, Father God, we pray for your continued covering up until the time that we will see each other again. Thank you so much, Father God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Thanks the Lord. It is about thanking the Lord now. Receive what we have asked for. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And uh, in behalf of Christ is our Rock Church Ministries International. Thank you very much for joining us in our worship service this Sunday. We pray that you have been blessed by our gathering. And uh, once again, before uh, we say goodbye, this is, our, this is your friend. This is your brother in the Lord. This is your servant in Christ, Hector DeLong. Nag-iiwan sa atin ng from the bottom of our heart, Maranata. Come Lord, our God. Amen. Amen. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord Church.
Praise children, uh, church. Uh, thank God for their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you, my brothers. Okay. Pray, pray, pray. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you. 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 Thank you.